This question, it's a tough question. That's why they stuck it at the end of the 1995 HSC paper. So if you are wrestling with it, or if you just feel completely beat down by it, right, don't feel too bad, okay? Um, can I ask you guys, what's your opinion on why, and you've had a go at it now for a few minutes, what is it that makes this hard? Any, any takers? There are many, many valid answers for this. Moe, give us one. Plotting a linear thing on a, on a pi x-axis. Straight for the juggle. Okay, plotting a linear thing. Moe's talking about this uh, y equals 2 minus x linear graph, a linear function. That's a straight line. Plotting at the same time as a trig graph. We pretty much never do that. So that's just weird out the gate, okay? I'm sure a lot of you were thinking the same thing. Is there anything else that you guys find difficult about this? That was basically it? <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, do you have one more, Sean? Yeah? You know when x equals minus 2, I'm going to be Our x axis is radiant because of the cos graph. Mm. Wait, where is x equals minus yeah, yeah, okay, very good. So you're coming on to the second part. We will get there. Um, and sort of it's intertwined with the same thing we just mentioned, right? What's going on? Is this, what's our scale? What's happening? Okay, so I want you to remember, right? Normally, you don't have to write this, but normally when we do a tree graph, right? We will either do it in degrees or radians. And you guys know that we ordinarily will go to like 360 degrees, right? And it is super important that we write that as 360 degrees, not... 360, right? Now when we do this in radians, we then say, okay, we just put that as, what's the equivalent to 360 degrees? 2 pi. 2 pi, right? We just say, now forget this, we don't need these units. We just label it as 2 pi, and I don't know if you've ever noticed the fact, we don't put any units on there, we just say it's 2 pi, right? Now that is actually something we're going to use to do this question, right? We're going to work out where we go, domain and range, and everything is going to be in radians, everything. Okay, so let's, let's have a go at this. Y equals four cos x. Probably the first thing, a lot of you asked me this and you could tell me therefore, the first thing you can work out is its range, right? It's how high and how low it goes. What's the highest value that four cos x gets to? Four. 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 And therefore from that, you can also get the lowest value, which is negative four, right? Yeah. Are you talking about a shift? What are you thinking of? So, so in terms of shift for this particular graph, I think we start with our normal cosine, and then there's no shift at all, actually. It just is a stretch out, okay? Um, you guys told me negative four, right down the bottom. Okay. All right, so that's good. That's good. Say it again. said plus four at the end of it, you can shift the whole thing off. Yeah, if I added four, I would, I would take that, and then I'd go zoop, up you go, which, which I'm not doing this time. Okay. Now, we're saying that we're going from two pi um, also, we're going from negative 2 pi. That's another weird thing that some of you didn't mention, but I saw a lot of you instinctively draw your axes just like this because we so frequently draw from 0 to whatever, right? But we're not doing that here. I wonder if anyone's already worked out why that is. Now, have a think. This is the first trap that a lot of people hit, and some of you didn't even know you hit it, okay? Ordinarily, you would draw your... Um, horizontal axis and you don't care for its relationship to the vertical axis. You're like negative 1, 1, and then you just do your 180 degrees, 360 degrees, or 2 pi, or whatever it happens to be. But here, it really matters where you put this, okay, and you'll see why later on. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to not negative 2 pi, but to work out where that is, I need to get a sense of the scale. Now, we've t said that this distance here is 4. Do you agree? Now, we don't have to, but it will make it easier for us if we make the horizontal scale the same. You catch that? Whatever distance that is on your page, maybe it's like three centimeters or something like that, right? If, you have, if you're not like content with your graph, draw a whole new one and follow with me. That same distance you've measured out, measured out horizontally, I'm going to eyeball, that looks like about there. And that is going to be four. Okay? I'm keeping my horizontal and my vertical axes consistent. Okay, so that's four, then I guess that means this is about two, right, it's halfway, yeah. If that's two, then that's four, then that's six, and the reason I'm putting six there is because six is very close to two pi. What is two pi? It's like 6.28 or so, isn't it? Pi is 3.14, if I double pi, I should be just a bit past six. Do you agree with that? Does that make sense? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, in a different color actually, just so you can see it. There's three solutions. Ah, uh, now, now you're talking straight. Okay, I'm going to put two pi there. Okay. Now this is important. You can see it's actually consistent with the scale that I had for the first graph. And I'm going to do the same uh, on the other side. I should put, um, 
I should put pi on as well. So to get that on there in an accurate way, pi is close to what integer? What's the closest whole number to pi? The closest, we're in radians, right? We're in radians, pi is 3.14, etc. So therefore the closest whole number will be just three. Do you agree with that? So here's three. There's three right there between two and four. So pi, which is 3.14, is just a bit after that. Okay, how are you feeling? Is that all right? Is that okay? So far, so good. Now, cosine. What's it look like? Can you trace out the shape of cosine in your hand? Yeah, okay, it starts high, goes down into the valley, and then it goes back up and ends up at the same spot, right? So from four, which is our highest spot, I've got to go down to my lowest spot at pi, right? So in fact, and this is literally what I do on my page, right? I go to pi, and then I draw a dotted line sort of down. So I know I'm going to hit negative four down here. Does that make sense? And then I do exactly the same thing over here at two pi. I'm trying to get some like landmarks myself to draw my graph through. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. How's that? Does that look okay to you guys? You guys can actually see it better than I can because I'm right next to the board. Sometimes I don't draw straight. I, I, I'm okay with that. Are you guys content? Okay. Um, I've got high points and low points, right? What other points are important when I'm graphing to know? Like uh, things I've got to label onto a graph. I'm going to need intercepts, right? What are the intercepts of this? You've got to go minus as well, sir. Have a think. I will, I will do this other side in a second, uh, but I haven't even got this part, the regular part. Look, if I've got pi and 2 pi here, I'm going to go high down to low. I've clearly got to hit somewhere in the middle, right? What's that middle spot? Pi on 2, thank you. So this is important. So I'm gradually, wrong graph, wrong color. I'm gradually building this thing. So pi on 2, if pi is about 3.14, pi on 2 is like 1.5 something. Okay, so if 1's here, 1.5 is going to be about there. This is pi on 2. Okay, I'll stick it over there. And then I'm also going to go to the other side, 3 pi on 2. Do you agree? You could even eyeball this and say it's just halfway. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Here. Okay, there you go. So now we know where we're going to go through. Do your very best. Maybe doing it with a pencil first so you get the shape right and then go over it in pen. Why is it important to go over in pen? We're thinking HSC. We're preparing for this. Um, they're going to scan this. Some pencils come up in scans, but some just do not at all because there's a light and it just reflects off. Okay? All right, let's do our best to thread the needle. Sorry, Alicia, did you say? If they don't see a graph, then there's nothing there to mark. Does that make sense? They, just see the actual they don't see the actual paper, they see a scan. Yeah, that's sorry. Cool. All right, it's scan, scan. No, that's a, that's a scan. Oh, that's a scan. The scan is a scam. Sure. Um, you'll be interested to know that, in fact, <laughs> teachers, also, teachers also were really unhappy at the movement because you can't be together with the other people marking, you can't discuss, and that's hard. Okay, so there's one part of the curve, and I'm going to do the other side as well. How's that? What do you think? Okay. Now, um, I will say, because of like the shape of your hand, I'm right-handed. Okay. If you're left-handed, it'll be opposite. But some curves are just easier to do in one direction, right? So I, I start from over here, and then I go from the top and do that. And then I got to take that same thing. And I'm going to copy it over. Does that make sense? So you, you guys are familiar with that already. Let's do this a bit more quickly. Okay. Hands up if your graph for cosine looks roughly like that. You okay with that? Thumbs up. Fantastic. All right. That part shouldn't have been too hard. Okay. Uh, let's label it, by the way. This is y equals 4, four cos x. Okay, um, why do they ask us to draw it all the way to the negative side? Why do they do that? Because they're just cruel. Have a think about the question. Why else might it be useful? So this is domain. This is domain, right? Why have they asked the domain to go over to the left there? There's actually a reason in the question. Yeah, okay, so this negative 2 pi sent us over to the left. Look at the other graph we're putting on here, right? This is exactly what Moe was talking about at the beginning, right? This linear graph, we also have to account for. Now, you'll see why. This is the point at which I say, here's why putting them on the same scale was going to be so useful to us. Um, y equals 2 minus x. That's what we're about to draw. What can you tell me about this straight line? It's minus. 
It's got a minus, what does that mean? Minus what? Right where, like, that, this way. Okay, so instead of being an increasing function, got to use precise language here, right? It's a decreasing function, negative gradient, okay? That's the negative. What does this tell us? The two. The two means that it's, it's, it's the intercept. This is the y intercept, right? So this is, now we're talking about a shift, okay? So here is where four is. Are you with me? So therefore, two has to be about there. Halfway, do you agree? You see that? Now, a lot of people on this scale have got it completely in the wrong spot. And that was one of the major issues with this question. Okay. Now, there's two. I know I'm going to go down at a gradient of negative one. And thankfully, I've already put positive two on my horizontal axis. So I can just join the dots. Okay. Okay. So you can go ahead and you can put your uh, lines on there. But so if you do a table of values, right? Yeah. My table of values was minus 2 to 3, right? Minus 2 to 3. Sure. So minus 2, if you sub it in, you get 2 minus minus 2, which is 4. Mm -hmm. So minus 2 minus 4. Yeah, that's why I'm up there. See that? In fact, because my scale is pretty good, right? Here's 2, here's negative 2. And you can see I almost completely line up, right? Which I can do because my scale is accurate. Does that make sense? Yeah. Got to be really careful with your details.